On today's episode, Paul George says he is a new kind of leader than he's been in the past. An update on James Harden, or is it really an update? And a little Terrence Mann statistic that I thought was going to be really interesting for you. And an announcement about KTLA and their coverage of the Clippers this season. Going to be talking about all that on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers. Your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Vizieri, born and raised in Los Angeles. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA Sports, NBA, and NBA history content. And Locked On Clippers, free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where I want you to let me know what you think of PG and the type of leader he says he has transformed into you let me know and this episode is brought to you by FanDuel America's number one sports book the NFL is back and kicked off on Thursday what a game that was between the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs and FanDuel's got you covered on all bets for the NFL this upcoming weekend so go to FanDuel and do that but let's get into today's episode and a couple things we're going to be talking about Paul George saying that he is a different type of leader now James Harden, a little update on him, a little Terrence Mann statistic that I thought was very interesting, and that goes hand-in-hand with Harden because Terrence Mann was the name that was rumored to be the one holding up the deal. And then an announcement about KTLA, obviously, trying to make sure you know everything about Clipper coverage this upcoming season, especially if you're here in Los Angeles. But let's get right into it. So, Paul George. There was a video on the Clippers you know, on Clippers social media pages with him saying that back in the day, he was more of a quiet, reserved kind of guy, just lead by example, which I've described him as such in this podcast and previous episodes. But now he's saying he's more of a vocal communicator guy, big brother kind of guy for the rest of the team. Now, I've kind of said he's in the middle of that. You know, I've I've said things like he's a lead by example guy but he seems to have a good relationship with the other guys on the squad and you can see it right now with the podcast p all the different guys he's gotten on that show different clippers he's gotten and of course steve balmer the next guest announced on monday for podcast p so gonna be a great sit down to listen to with paul george and our owner but it just shows you know pg seems to have very good you know interpersonal skills with guys in the team and just in general and it seems like the guys are his friends and he's and he has good relationships within the team so in that sense I think he's a good communicator the only thing I have to say about Paul George's leadership did he lead those teams in Indiana he absolutely did but you got to remember those two teams had two guys that were dogs and leaders and that's David West and George Hill vocal guys tough guys Uh, especially in David West's case. But Paul George was still the lead-by-example guy, the star of the team. Now, when he went to OKC, that's really Russ's team. So Paul George kind of seemed like not the second-best player necessarily, but he was coming in to help Russ and help this post-KD Russ era of Oklahoma City Thunder basketball. And now, of course, he is viewed as the secondary guy to Kawhi Leonard, which he is and has said that he is himself. Of course, on Podcast P, we've talked about it several times, He said that he's very comfortable being the number two and he knew at a certain stage of his career that he couldn't be that number one guy if he wanted to win a championship. So that's why he is the number two. So you can have multiple leaders on the team. It's funny that he made this comment so recently or so soon after I made a recent episode on leadership and the different types of leadership and Ty Lue saying that Russell Westbrook is the leader of the team that we never had. So, I mean, I guess that goes to show you what I said in that episode was true. When Ty Lue was talking about that, he's talking about a vocal leader, it seems. 
Because I said in that episode, there are different types of leaders. I don't think that you look at Kawhi Leonard and say he doesn't lead at all. He leads by example in the court, in my opinion, and he adds a level of seriousness to the team when he's on the court. And Paul George, you know, I put him in the middle there. But the thing about Paul George is that he has such wavering confidence. One night, he looks like a demigod, untouchable, a top 10 player in the league type. And then there are other nights where he looks like he doesn't want to be aggressive, just wants to settle for a bunch of long jump shots, wants to be, you know, head in the clouds on defense kind of, just not focused fully. And playing like more of a glue guy that has a little bit of juice off the bounce than a star that he is. And when you have a guy that's a star player that you don't really know what you're going to get out, get from him every night in terms of the little things as well as just his mentality on a night-to-night basis, it's very hard to follow that person's lead. Because it's like, what example are you setting by being one guy one night and then another guy the next and I'm not saying Paul George doesn't try or it's for lack of effort but I really think it's in his head some nights and it's his decision making as well some games he is just absolutely incredible and then there are other games where he'll shoot eight for 22 and just chuck himself out of it with bad decisions and shoot too many jump shots not attack the basket let the refs not calling fouls get in his head And just seems to throw the ball away. Various things like that. So when it comes to Paul George's leadership, I absolutely love hearing that he's more vocal now. Maybe that's the Russ influence. Maybe that's just his maturity. And I also think it's a level of stability that he feels with the Clippers. You know, he played seven years with the Indiana Pacers. That's a decent amount. He was their guy. He was their franchise player. He was their best player since Reggie Miller, in my opinion. Of course, Danny Granger had a really solid run there, but Paul George, I'm not just saying it now because he's a clipper, but I was saying it even then. By 2013, I felt Paul George was going to be better than Danny Granger, performed better than him in the playoffs than any playoffs that Danny Granger performed in. And by 2014, I think it was safe to say that Paul George was better than Danny ever was. With all due respect to Danny, former clipper Danny Granger. But Paul George, you know, he's a very special player. However, after the seven years in Indiana, he spent two years in Oklahoma City. Then he comes to the Clippers, and he's really found the spot here that he wants to play at. He has said several times he wants to retire a Clipper. He loves being here. He's talking about the Intuit Dome like he's part of the long-term plans. He signed for a fat extension after the bubble. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. At the time, I was not having it. I was like, this guy has performed poorly in three consecutive playoffs, and... Of course, one of them, he had a shoulder injury. And he claims to have had a partially torn meniscus in the Utah series. But, man, at the end of the day, he was still healthy enough to be playing and still have good games in the series. We haven't seen, it's not like we haven't seen him be inconsistent when he's healthy. So I'm not fully blaming it on the injuries, even though that definitely hurt him. The fact of the matter is, he had three straight postseasons where he was disappointing. If you want to go to four with the series he got swept by the Cavs in 2017, you can. But that Cavs team was really good. However, he had that 26-point lead that the Pacers blew in Game 3. Or was it Game 4? I think it may have... No, it was Game 3, I believe. So, that was really brutal. So, you can even go that far back. And the Clippers put their trust in him by giving him a fat extension, the contract that he's currently on, $50 million a year, after the bubble. And you know what? He performed that following year. He had arguably the best season of his career. Clippers made history. And now he's a an absolute hero and a Clipper legend, and in my opinion, has a case for being the best Clipper of all time just because he led us past the finish line that felt so unachievable at one point. But the thing is, he is still not the second, he's still not the best player on this team. But now he's going into his fifth season as a Clipper. He's played in every single season. Kawhi missed the full season. So I am excited to see what he's got. He's saying he's on demon time. And bully stuff and all that. Now he's saying he's a vocal leader. I'm happy to hear it, but, you know, less talk, more action. And we're going to get to see that very soon because the preseason is not too far away. But coming up, James Harden, a little update on him. And how about a little Terrence Mann in your life? Because every Clipper fan knows we need more of that. Going to be talking about those two coming up. 
I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel. The NFL season is ready to go, and with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, you can be along the ride as well. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket is no joke. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. So the latest report on James Harden, Mark Spears reports that from what he's being told, the Clippers are not desperate about Harden and they feel like they're going to keep watching this fire burn. So I know, I know. It's not really much of an update, is it? But it's worth talking about just a little bit. And I'm really happy about the way this is going, can I say? Because everyone knows the way I feel about James Harden. Now, Next week on the show, actually, I think it's two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, I will have an episode with a Clipper fan that is pro James Harden trade. And I'm going to be listening to his side and going back and forth a little bit. Hopefully, that'll be entertaining for you. But the point is, James Harden, as of now, nothing's really changed. And I like that. I like that. I want to go into training camp with this team that we have. And it's funny because a lot of people don't think that this team is good enough. They think we need Harden to beat Denver. I don't think James Harden is going to put us over the top of Denver. I think James Harden just ensures us a better regular season. And I get it. I am the guy that's been saying you need a great regular season in order to win the championship. But the thing is, I think whether we have Harden or not, the regular season is contingent on the health of Kawhi and Paul at the end of the day. I get their point. We miss Kawhi and Paul for those 25 games each, but we have James Harden, so maybe we can still get 53, 54 wins. Maybe so, but if we've missed Paul George and Kawhi for that much, I don't know if they're going to be healthy in the playoffs. I don't know what kind of rhythm our team will have. How many times will all four of them have played together? If they have played 50-plus games together, all four of them, that would be fantastic. But again, is it even a good basketball fit? A lot of questions to be asked. Right now, we're going into this season with one thing that I did say last season at this time, though, which sucks. But we do have some continuity. We do have some continuity. This is Nicholas Batum's fourth year as a Clipper. This is Kawhi Leonard's fifth year as a Clipper, but four years playing because he missed the 2022 season. This is Paul George's fifth year as a Clipper. This is Ivica Zubac's sixth year as a Clipper. This is Terrence Mann's fifth year as a Clipper. This is Norman Powell's second full season as a Clipper. I can keep going on. Now Mason Plumlee and Bones Highland and Russell Westbrook will have a training camp under their belt. So we have some con continuity. It seems like we have a roster that likes each other. But I did say all these things last season at the same time. Hopefully, they all get along, which I don't really have much of a concern about. But hopefully, they all get the minutes that they deserve and they're distributed well. And I think if we do, and we have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George play over 60 games, we got a chance to get a top three seed. It's the same conversation as last year. It's very contingent on their health. I really don't think our supporting cast is bad. I have faith in Westbrook. And again, I think the people that really want James Harden just don't have that much faith in Russell Westbrook. And here's my thing. That's fine if you don't have much faith in Russell Westbrook. But you have faith in James Harden? Like, is it really that big of a gap for you? In the regular season, I get it. Okay, Harden's better than him. But the way Russell Westbrook just played in the playoffs, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people think that he only played that way because Kawhi and Paul were out. But he was playing well even with Kawhi in games one and two. So I think it's just he's in a more carefree role. He's never been the third option in a playoffs because he never made the playoffs to the Lakers. 
And now he's got that luxury. And he's able to do what he wants to do primarily, and that's bring the ball up and distribute it and also just run the offense, get different guys' touches. He's the leading assist guy, can push the pace when he gets the ball off the rebound and whatnot. Bringing in Harden would take that away from him to a large degree. And also make us play slower basketball, which again does fit our pace more, but I think we need to mix it up a little bit more this season, and I think that's why we brought back Bones Highland. I think that's why we went out and got Kenyon Martin Jr. and are so high on not trading Terrence Mann because we want to play at a faster pace than we have in previous seasons with Kawhi and Paul. So the James Harden thing, what I'm hoping for is we enter the season, and look, I trust our depth. A lot of people don't, and I get it. If you have doubts about who Ty Lue plays and, you know, not playing Terrence Mann enough and Robert Covington going to the cellar and if Marcus Morris is still on the roster, God forbid, he's playing so many minutes again. So then we're in the same problem that we were in last year, which some Clipper fans might be concerned about. But hopefully, hopefully, as a fan that's trying to be a tad optimistic, just a tad, Paul George has said, we want to take the regular season more seriously this year. Ty Lue has said on numerous occasions, including yet another one on a recent podcast with Chris Haynes and Mark Stein, saying that they will, reiterating that we want to take the regular season more seriously. Lawrence Frank also said that. So if that's the case, that should apply to Ty Lue as well. And that is that tinkering tie cannot be much of a thing in the regular season. You should try to figure out what you want to have in terms of rotation deep in the season and in the playoffs early and start to figure that out early and get guys in rhythm early and feeling good early. And guess what? We've got four games early to start the season right in the beginning that are very winnable. And if we get off to a 4-0 start, even if it's not against the strongest opposition, it does not matter because on the schedule it still says 4-0 and and the confidence will start flowing through the players. And that's massive because we did not get off to a good season, uh, start to the season last year. We were 1-4 the previous year. In 2021, we were 2-0. That was pretty good before we got 50-pieced by the Dallas Mavericks. But that was our closest to a solid start. 2020, we got off to a pretty solid start as well. But if we can get off to a 4-0 start, that would be fantastic. And I think if we start playing well without Harden, I think we won't want to mess up the vibes. We don't want to bring a guy in that is kind of a malcontent at times. And we won't feel like we have to mix it up too much. But that's very contingent, yet again, on the health of Kawhi and Paul. But coming up, going to be talking about where you can watch Kawhi and Paul and a little Terrence Mann statistic that you're going to like. Going to be talking about that coming up. All right, so the recent news is that KTLA, where you saw a decent chunk of Clipper games last season, got an extension. So again, you will be getting channels or Clipper games on KTLA 5, and they will air 15 Clipper games this season, including all four preseason games. 11 regular season games will be on KCLA. Eight of them are on the road. The first one will be October 27th at Utah. We've got a big game against the Dallas Mavericks against them on Saturday, November 25th. The, what's the biggest matchup on KTLA? I'd say Thursday, December 14th against the Warriors. That is going to be pretty big time. Then we got Tuesday, April 9th at the Suns. So KTLA, how do I feel about that? It's cool. I mean, for me, it's very nostalgic. Growing up, Ralph Lawler, Mike Smith, KTLA 5. Got a decent chunk of games there for many, many years before we went exclusively on FSN Prime Ticket. And I know if you're a follower or a listener to this from around the world and around the country and you watch on League Pass or an illegal stream, you're like, this doesn't really matter to me. I get it. That's why I'm not going to talk about it much. But for all you locals, KTLA 5, make sure if you don't see the game on Bally, it's going to be on KTLA 5. And by the way, in terms of Bally, I saw an article today that they could be going down after next year. So just keep in mind, this could be the last season on Bally Sports SoCal, but it's been what? The third season or second season? I think this will be the third season on Bally Sports. And... Uh, it might be the fourth. I think it may have been the 2021 season, midway through that one, that it became Bally. But 
you know, there's no nostalgia in Valley. It's pretty recent. Um, I don't care if it goes down. It, there's nothing like FSM Prime Ticket. That was classic. Oh, man. The, I can feel the nostalgia, the chills. Oh, man. Ralph Lawler on the call. Shout out Ralph Lawler, man. Even though I love the, uh, Brian Seaman, but Ralph is the Clippers. Anyway, how about the Terrence Mann thing I was talking about? So I saw a stack, shout out to NBA University on Twitter, that Terrence Mann shot 44% on non-corner threes this past season. And when I think of Terrence Mann shooting the three balls, I always think of corner, always. Especially because that's the spot that he helped break that curse. Oh man, what a night. What a night. But Terrence Mann has made it his thing to shoot corner threes. But the fact that he shot 44% on non-corner threes just further shows how far Terrence has come as a three-point shooter. And I think Terrence Mann needs to see that statistic. Because the thing about Terrence is other teams still don't guard him like he shoots that percentage from three. They still kind of leave him open. They still dare him to shoot. And he hesitates. He doesn't act like a shooter. He's got to think to himself now, I'm shooting 44% from non-corner threes. I'm shooting 38% from three overall. I got to let that thing fly. If they're giving me space, I got to let that thing fly and keep the defense honest. And you know what? I think Terrence Mann will still shoot a good percentage doing that. And then teams are going to start closing out. And we know Terrence is one of the best players we have at attacking closeouts. He's an athlete. He shoots 70 plus percent at the rim. And he has some of the best explosion on our team. So Terrence Mann... Keep letting it fly. Some other things. I heard from some of my, uh, you know, sources, quote unquote, not real, but, and you can see it in the picture that the Clippers posted, but I've heard that Kawhi Leonard is in really good shape right now. Really good. So he slimmed down a bit. So he might move a little bit quicker, maybe move a little bit more fluidly like he was in 2019 with Toronto. We'll see. The thing is, just because he's looking good, though, I don't want to get too optimistic and say that, you know, that means much because at the end of the day, he hasn't even proven that he can play nine straight games healthy, you know, without the load management thing. So we'll see. We'll absolutely see. I really hope that he can do that this season. I'm praying for it. Really am. But it doesn't matter how great he looks. Because the thing is, when he plays, he's going to be fantastic. We're all going to marvel at it. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to make the Clippers a great, a very good team. Don't want to say great until I see consistency. But it's going to make us a very good team. One of the best in the West. Maybe one of the best in the league when we have him on the court. But it's that consistency. It's that frequency. How long is he going to be on the court? Can he play 10 straight games? Probably not because there's going to be a back-to-back in between those considering we have 15. But if he only misses that back-to-back, maybe he's playing 8 or 9 games out of 10. We'll take that all day long. And he's going to be playing those games at a high level. We'll see what the minutes restriction is. We'll see in preseason. We'll probably get more of a clue how many minutes he's going to be playing to start the season. And another, you know, update, Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell, and K.J. Martin were getting in some work at the Rico Hines runs at UCLA. So it's great to see three of the Clipper players playing together, scrimmaging together. We saw those videos last year with Paul George and John Wall. It's great to see Russell Westbrook diving on the floor. I mean, can you not get enough of this guy's heart? I know a lot of people can. They don't like him, but oh, man. He plays with so much passion, so much heart. Going hard in a Rico Hines run in the offseason at 34 years old. Going into his 16th season. And come on, man. I'm so excited to have Russell Westbrook on our team for a full season. So excited. And great to see KJ Martin and Norman Powell out there playing with him. So, looking forward to it. That's all I got for this one. Let me know what you think of the PG leadership thing. About his what he said about you know changing up his style. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA sports, and NBA history and NBA content. Locked on Clippers, free and available, all your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube, where you need to comment, like I said, on the pinned comment. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video for all things LA Clippers. The age-old proverb continues, go Clips.